Good morning, guys. This is Miss Middleton. Um, and today we're going to go over some notes. Uh, your, so depending on the class that you're in, it might be in a slightly different place. Um, but if you are in my third block, uh, you're going to go get down and get your um, Unit 2, Universe, and all those stars notes. We're going to go ahead and we're going to learn about stars now. So we talked about the Big Bang. <clears throat> how there's three pieces of evidence that back up the fact that everything started at one small spot and expanded out. Um, one was that everything's redshifting. When we look out at galaxies, everything's moving to the redshifted uh, side of the spectrum, so the wavelengths are getting longer. Everything's moving away. Um, the other evidence was there's cosmic background radiation. There's this leftover energy from the Big Bang um, that we see everywhere. Um, and then the last piece of evidence is this guy right here, the W map that is showing that as the universe expands and cools, that energy is turned into to mass and matter. And of course, anything that has mass has gravity. So you see this clumping up over time, um, which is what we're seeing here. All right. So um, you guys yesterday watched the origins video and went through and filled these out hopefully um but now we're gonna talk about stars all right um just as i'm gonna flip back and forth from uh the powerpoint notes just so that i have a reference but um stars were the first guides for navigation you guys learned that from the moana if you haven't seen it yet probably should do that today's this weekend's a perfect time to do that. It's all about stars, using them to find your way. Um, and that is accurate. That is an accurate part of that movie. Um, and then the closest star to Earth is the sun. A lot of people mess that up and say like, oh no, the sun isn't a star. The sun is a star and it's our closest one. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, there is something that you need to add to your notes and that is constellations um just a little side note it will be on your it will be on your test so constellations so we're going to add this right here which uh maybe if i can i'll go to the end of this all right so constellations i don't know if you want to we're going to highlight it because it's going to be on your test coming up next Friday. So constellations are groups of stars, groups of stars that make an apparent pattern in the night sky. I'm gonna move this guy over so that does with the rest of the words, there we go. Okay, so constellations are a group of stars that make a pattern in the night sky. Um, you probably have heard of the Big Dipper. Um, <clears throat> it looks like a, like a big ice cream scoop. Um, or like, yeah, a big ice cream scoop. And Or if you look at this image right here, you might have seen um, Orion's belt. It's like three stars that make a line. Um, in the night sky. It looks like that in the night sky. And <clears throat> the thing is, it these stars have light years between each other. So, for example, <clears throat> in Orion constellation, the, um, the furthest star away is about 225 light years away, whereas the closest one is about 50 light years away. Okay, so... Um, the night sky appears as a 2D projection, but there's light years between the stars. So let's add that in there to our notes. So the night sky is a 2D, so like paper, projection of... projection but there's light years but there are light years between
stars. Got it. <laughs> All right, so um, this is a big deal. You need to know what a constellation is for our test next Friday. Um, and Orion's Bell or the Big Dipper um, is an example of one. So what characteristics can we observe about stars? So first thing, what is a star? A star is a large, hot, glowing ball of gas that is powered by nuclear fusion. And we're going to talk about what that is. Um, it's freaking sweet. Um, it's not what Three Mile Island was. That's fission. Um, but fusion, you're bringing, you're fusing atoms together. So it's pretty cool. Um, there are about 9,000 stars visible to the naked eye. And I do want to show you um, the difference between area here. So if you are living in the inner city, um, you might see four stars at night. There's too much light pollution. But the further away you get from, from light and light pollution, you can see more of the night sky. And I want to show you in Pennsylvania, we have the, we're lucky enough, um, dark park, Pennsylvania. We have the largest dark park on the East coast in Pennsylvania, and it's called Cherry Springs State Park. And if you look, this is what you would see. The internet's slowing down. Come on, buddy. Let's see if we can see it. It's super cool. Yeah, let's look at this image. This is what you would see at night because you're not allowed to have light in the, the park. Even at nighttime, you're supposed to um, have like, if you know those headlamp things where you, you can have like a normal flashlight on the headlamp and then you click a button and it turns it to a red light. You can only use red light if you're like trying to go to the bathroom or whatever in the middle of the night at this park. Um, and that right there is the Milky Way. We're looking at the side view of the swirl right there. So we this is the Milky Way. We're in one of these arms way far out here and we're seeing... Kind of like um, if it was a Frisbee, we're seeing the side view right there. So cool. Anyway, it's about three hours away. So if you're going there, just, you know, plan for a long trip. There's about 200 billion stars in our Milky Way. Our, uh, the second closest star is Proxima Centauri, and it's 24 trillion miles away or 4.2 light years. So again, what that means... Light years is not um, time, it's a distance, okay? So if we, what that means is if we got into a spaceship going the speed of light, it would still take us four years to get to the closest star. And remember, um, in one second, light can go around the Earth about seven times. So it's booking it, okay? Space is very big, uh, so we use a measure called light year. It's the distance light can travel <clears throat> in one year at 186,000 miles per second. Okay, so there's certain ways that we, we know that a star is a ball of gas. It's not a fire, okay? It's a ball of gas that is fusing inside of it. Um, so how do we classify? What are some characteristics of stars? Well, the first one is uh, it's related to the star's stage of life and mass, okay? So all of these, all three of these are going to be related to its stage of life, which we'll get to later in the notes, and its mass. The first piece of information is the color, and color is determined by temperature, okay? Um, in art class, you learned that blue is a cool color and red is a hot color. That is false for science. For science, red is going to be the coolest color. Look at this scale right here. Um, at 3,000 degrees Kelvin, it'll uh, that star would still melt your face off. But it is considered a cooler star, whereas uh, over here at 30,000 Kelvin is going to be super hot, and that's blue. And if you think about it, um, if you've ever roasted marshmallows or been near a fire, um, there's like blue flames that are down closer to the wood. And if you are roasting marshmallows and you like a burnt marshmallow, you put it near the blue because it's hotter. 
Um, so it'll heat up faster. It'll burn faster. Whereas if you just want to like puff out your marshmallow, you, you hang back, you go where the yellow flame is because it's not as hot. So blue is the hottest. Red is the coolest. All right. So you do need to know this order. Hottest is blue. Then it goes white, yellow, orange, and red is the coolest. There will be a question like that on your test. So just take note. All right. Another way that we, uh, that we look at stars and we care we look at the characteristics of them is by size and that depends on the star's mass of the nebula so a nebula we'll talk about later is a pretty much a space cloud it's gas and dust um and if you have a small nebula if you have a small like space cloud you get a small star if you have a big nebula or space cloud you get um a big star so uh i would just want to show you a clip of of a video come on now sorry guys <sighs> showing you the different sizes i hope this doesn't mean that the internet's going to be dumb for you guys the different sizes of stars in our in our um not even in our galaxy uh, that we can see okay so here's this video and i'm only going to show you a little bit i'm going to skip ahead to where it's looking at the moon and then um there we go maybe load up um just because it is bonker the size of some of these stars um so let's go like right here. All right. So there's the moon. Pluto's smaller than the moon. Then you have Mercury. That's our smallest planet. Normal sized planet, not dwarf planet. Ganymede is actually a moon of Jupiter. And it's bigger than Mercury, which is crazy. A moon bigger than one of our planets. Um, you then have Mars. hey -o! Mars is a big deal because of yesterday, Venus and Earth are considered sister planets, so they're about the same size. And then you're going to get the biggest rocky planet that we've seen out in space so far, okay? So Kepler 10c is the largest one that we've seen so far. Neptune is our smallest gas giant in our solar system. Then you have Uranus. Look at those rings. So Saturn is not the only gas giant with rings, just as a heads up. And then you have, um, this is the, one of the smallest possible stars. I don't even want to say the name of it. Okay, you have Jupiter there. So Jupiter is our biggest planet. And then this is one of the largest gas giants that we've seen out in space. Again, I'm not going to say its name because it's a whole bunch of letters and numbers. Here's our sun. And then Sirius A... You have an orange giant, that's Pollux, and they just, look at our little sun back there. It's a little. There's just an orange giant. Orange giant. So what you're seeing is that there's giants, there's super giants, um, there's some called a hyper giant. And these blue ones, the blue ones, remember, are hotter, blue and white are hotter, Yellow, oranges, those are going to be cooler. Reds, right? This is a red supergiant. So these are going to be cooler stars. And actually what you're going to learn later, not today, is about how these are actually... Um, these are actually at the end of their life stage. So when they puff themselves up to a supergiant or a hypergiant, um, they're, they're on their way to dying, which is intense. Anyway, so um, brightness is another. So, so far we characterize stars by their color, their size, and then their brightness. So that depends on their size and temperature. So obviously a bigger star might appear brighter. Um, and there's two ways we look at this. One is apparent brightness, which is the brightness seen from Earth. Let's highlight that. And that is dependent on distance. Obviously, the most apparently bright star in our sky is the sun. It's right there. When the sun's out, we can't see any other stars. Or when we're facing the sun, we can't see any other stars. 
um, because it's that bright, because it's that close to us. So it's the apparent magnitude. Um, kind of similar to this image right here, where this little guy with a flare is closer, the flare is going to seem brighter than if you would see him off in the distance, that little flare isn't going to be so bright. Um, what we actually, what scientists actually use um, when it comes to looking at classifying stars, they look at the absolute magnitude. So that's the actual brightness of a star. If we could pull all the stars up to the same, if we could grab all the stars, pull them up next to the sun, we could say, oh, you're actually brighter than the sun. You're, you're dimmer than the sun. And they actually give a number for it. Okay. So there's an actual number value for that brightness brightness. So that's absolute magnitude. So you have apparent, how it appears, how just looking, and then absolute is an actual number value, um, the actual brightness. Okay. Now star formation. Um, how long a star lives depends on its mass. So remember it's mass. Um, this is like a huge deal. How long a star highlight, just highlight the crap out of that. You could star it, I would star it. All right. Um, so remember, if you have a little star from a little, little nebula, um, it's going to have a different life than a big one. So let me show you what I mean by that. So you can see from this diagram right here that an average or a small star has a different life. It'll have a different ending, different steps here than if it's a massive star or like a supermassive star. Uh, there's different things that can become as it goes through its life stages, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, but all stars start as a stellar nebula. So stellar nebula, cloud of gas and dust, where gravitational attraction causes the cloud to begin to collapse. So um, you have this gas and dust right here. The protostar stage, you're going to have the nebula heating up, and it increases density and pressure. It actually starts to glow at this, this stage. So down here, um, you can see that the protostar or the nebula collapses and it starts turning, gravity starts pulling it into a circle because that's what gravity does. And down here, it's starting to glow. It's a, at its protostar stage, okay? So, and I wanna point out protostar, if it helps you, is kind of like a prototype. Um, if you've ever watched like a car show or like um, if you remember when Tesla came out with that really weird boxy truck looking thing, that was a prototype. It wasn't being sold. It wasn't the real deal yet. It was just, hey, here's this thing that's happening. Um, a protostar isn't a real star yet. It's not the official. It's not an actual star. Um, it's actually a star when extreme temperature causes pressure and gravity to be great enough to start a fusion reaction. All right, so you have to have fusion in order for a real star to be a thing, okay? And um, it's actually, we're gonna be doing this activity after the notes, okay? Um, where you kind of like tell me these steps and stuff, okay? So just be aware, you need to be, aware of these things. All right. Um, so you have extreme temperatures causing pressure and gravity to start fusion within the star. So again, fusion is when atoms of hydrogen join to form atoms of helium. So here, if you remember with the Big Bang, uh, we talked about how hydrogen was the first element, right? So initially it was so hot and there was so much energy that you just had electrons and protons like whew, whew, flying all over the stuff, place. And then as the universe expanded and cooled, suddenly they couldn't resist each other and they joined together and they made hydrogen. That was our first element. Well, now inside stars, you have hydrogen and hydrogen coming together and creating a brand new element, helium. This is how we get elements, all right, inside of stars. So. What is fusion? Let's look at our sun. Nuclear fusion occurs within the, the sun's core, right there. Um, hydrogen atoms combine to form helium and release huge amounts of heat, radiation, and light. So that's the crux of what is fusion, okay? 
he, it tells you where it's at. It's in the core of the star. That fusion, that energy, that light, that radiation takes over 10,000 years uh, for the light to get from the sun's core to the sun's surface. So even when it's forming in here, it's going to take a while to get out to the surface because stars, stars are huge, okay? All right, now let me make sure I didn't miss any cool videos. All right, protostar. All right, um, we'll watch this just a little bit if it loads. Nebulous house, baby stars in every spiral arm of the galaxy. These regions are the nurseries for new stars. There are young stars in these regions that are heating up gas clouds that surround them and making those gas clouds glow pink. Stars are made out of gas, basically, and our galaxy has gas. In fact, our galaxy, you can think of it as having an atmosphere of gas and dust that surrounds all of the stars that we see in the disk. And it's from this gas that new stars are born. By observing nebulas at different stages in their evolution, the story of a star's birth begins to emerge. It all starts inside a cold, dark cloud of dust and hydrogen gas. Nebulas! A quiet tug of war begins. The cloud wants to dissipate like smoke in the air, but gravity wants to pull it together. They're in a kind of balance between gravity pulling in and gas pressure pushing back out. Gravity wins and the material crunches down into a disk that is the beginning of becoming a star. So the proto star it's heating more up more and more gas towards the center of the disk it gets denser and denser and then and hotter and hotter fusion happens it pushes out there's so much energy it Until pushes finally, the rest of the gas at away 18 million degrees a miraculous transformation takes place fusion hydrogen atoms fuse together to form helium okay so that's pretty much where we ended here right in our notes so let's look at once fusion starts how that thing is going to keep going okay so gravity is pull there's two things happening and you can see it in this image gravity is pushing in so pulls in um and that's going to increase its density so gravity is pulling in and then nuclear fusion is pushing out it's heating um heat it's heat caused by fusion creates internal pressure so it's gonna push outward so it's constantly like battling with itself okay um and when this is happening it's called a main sequence star so once fusion begins once hydrogen starts fusing it's considered a main sequence star so our sun right now has this happening within it it's fusing hydrogen into helium, and it's considered a main sequence star. So 90% of a star's life cycle, uh, it's actively undergoing nuclear fusion of the element hydrogen. Gravity and pressure are balanced. So uh, you have nuclear fusion of the element hydrogen in the main sequence. That's a big deal. Once it runs out of hydrogen, that's when everything goes south. So gravity and pressure are balanced. I'm going to highlight that with a different color. Orange. All right, our sun. Where'd the sun go? Our sun is an example of that. Okay, so that's where we're going to end notes with the sun living an awesome life, hydrogen's fusing. Remember, um, when we get down here, hydrogen runs out and things get crazy. So that's it for today. Have a good day. Maybe. <laughs> yes, have a good day.